Now, did you know that building homes in Australia is getting harder and harder? And I think you'll know of the mainstream reasons why building houses are getting harder and harder. You obviously have construction costs going up, you have a limited supply of land, and the NIMBY element, and a whole lot of other factors. But what you may not know is that the regulators have a hand in making things a lot harder. Now, the other elements of housing, livability, sustainability, quality, and all these factors also play a critical role. And that's where the National Construction Code comes in. The code writers want to introduce a standard where builders will be building new houses that are of a certain quality and it's got to be sustainable and it's got to be livable. Now, everything has a trade-off. So introducing a new code means that it's going to make things a lot harder and a lot more expensive. Now, as a roofer, there's one thing in the codes that is starting to interest me. A short while ago, we had an inquiry from someone who said, listen, my garage roof is so hot. Uh, the attic gets so hot that I just can't work in the garage. So can you come out, give us a quote to put some whirly birds on the garage? And whilst normally I would say, no mate, whirly birds are useless, they don't work. And I'm gonna go into a whole lot of reasons why whirly birds in Australia just don't work. In this case, I said to myself, listen, you have gotta be up for the times because the new regulations are coming in and the new National Construction Code stipulates a certain level of roof attic ventilation. So now trying to figure out a ventilation system for this particular prospect who has got a hot attic area is becoming quite interesting. And the reason it's interesting is that now we've got two different problems that we have to try to investigate. One, obviously the homeowner says, it's too hot and I want to cool it. And what they really mean is we need to ventilate the attic space because if you provide ventilation, it means that you are replacing the air in the hot attic space with cooler air. So it's an air replacement process. So when you replace the air, you make the attic cooler. And while you're doing that, you're actually changing the air in the attic. So there's a ventilation of the attic going on. Now, the interesting thing is that the new requirements of the National Construction Code has no requirements for cooling the attic. It's got a requirement for keeping the house cool, which means that you have to put ceiling bats on. But in terms of keeping the attic cool, the National Construction Code has got no requirements for this. What it has, though, is a requirement to ventilate. Why ventilate? Because if you don't ventilate that space, you get stale air and you get condensation and condensation is not good for the structure, also not good for the occupants. So in an effort to make the houses more livable, the code is stipulating ventilation requirements. And with these new ventilation requirements, the hot topic of do whirly birds work will soon become a topic again. So let's talk about whirly birds. Now everyone here in Australia know what whirly birds are, right? They're the little whirly things that you put on your roofs. So you may ask me, why do I have this thing against whirly birds? Well, I really haven't got a gripe with whirly birds themselves. My gripe is how whirly birds are normally installed. And I would say that virtually every whirly bird here in Australia has been installed incorrectly. Now that's a pretty bold statement, you might say. All whirly birds have been installed incorrectly. Now, the actual whirly bird itself, most of them are put in correctly. But by putting a whirly bird in, virtually everyone is missing out on the fact that whirly birds are part of a system. So there's actually two parts to whirly birds. There's the whirly bird itself, and there are the vents. And the vents are usually located in the eaves. And the whole purpose is that the whirly birds are meant to extract the air out, but it cannot do any extraction work unless there's some air coming in. So it's an air replacement process. So this is how most people think. 
you put a whirly bird in there, you got a lot of hot air there, and when you put a whirly bird in, that hot air comes out. Doesn't happen. And this is how most people think. They say, can you put a whirly bird on the roof and we'll get rid of all this hot air. And this is how most whirly bird installations are done here in Australia. And that's the reason I'm saying that this simply does not work. So the only way that the hot air can escape is if cold air is introduced in and the cooler air pushes the hot air up and then the hot air then runs out. So there's got to be a means to bring in cooler air for the hot air to escape. So the whole system is an air replacement system, which means that there has to be vents in the eaves somewhere to let the cooler air in so that the, the air replacement works and the hot air escapes. So what happens is that the ambient air will come into the attic and you've got just slightly above ambient temperature in your roof cavity. And two things happen. You have a lowering of the temperature in the attic and also you have airflow because the National Construction Code says thou shall have airflow not to reduce the heat in the ceiling cavity but to eliminate condensation because you do have condensation in that area that the code wants to eliminate because condensation is not good for the health of the building or the health of the occupants. So now suddenly with whirly birds we're talking about two things. One, the traditional requirement for a whirly bird is most people say can I call my attic? But the National Construction Code says it doesn't matter about the temperature of the attic what we want you to do is to provide airflow, ventilation. So the code has a different requirement to most people who just want their attics cooled. So now as we move into the future, ventilation requirements will supersede the requirements to keep the attic cooler. So are we going to be seeing more whirly birds on roofs so that we can comply with the new ventilation requirements. Now in the past this was never a code thing but now it's in the code. So all new housing and the code stipulates that in climate zones 6, 7 and 8 and in Sydney we're looking at zone 5 for the eastern areas and western Sydney is classified as zone 6. Um, Melbourne is zone 6, um, Brisbane um, it's tropical say, and, and they are out of the requirements but a lot of areas in Australia falls into 6, 7 and 8 category zones and they all come under the new National Construction Code in terms of ventilation. Now we all know that whirly bird installers if they read the instructions on the box, we'll know that for every whirly bird you have to put two eaves vents in. So why don't they put any vents in and they only put a whirly bird? Because this is a lot harder to do. The eaves vents actually take longer than the whirly bird to install. Uh, and depending on the eaves, you might have asbestos eaves and people don't want to touch asbestos eaves. Um, and if the eaves are two stories up, imagine how are they going to cut a vent into the eaves. And when you have single story eaves, you have fences, close the eaves, you have bushes and everything. So it's just physically so hard to get into the eaves to install the eaves vents. And that's why people don't do it. They just pretend a single whirly bird, which is an outlet without any inlet, is still going to do the job. Now, the other difficulty with inlet vents is that even if you put vents in, there's no guarantee that it'll provide the ventilation into your attic. And that's because of the construction. You usually have a wall plate, you've got ceiling insulation, and you've got the rafter, you have sarking or a blanket insulation. 
And as a re result, this little area becomes very crowded. So you've got restrictions on that point that you may not know about. And if you do, it's very difficult to open up that area to let the air in. And whilst I think that a lot of people may get on the bandwagon with the ventilation requirements and say, we're into the whirly bird business, that is going to be a big problem. And the code has got a little diagram in here and it stipulates where the air goes in and then there's a note saying that you've got to leave a certain gap in there to let the air in because you're fighting the ceiling insulation and you're fighting the wall structure. And this indicates that even the code writers themselves are not quite sure how builders and, and roofers will be able to satisfy the new ventilation requirements. It is one thing to write the code, it's another thing to make sure that it's easy to comply with because if it's too hard to comply with then I think the codes are virtually useless. Now we've just spoken about whirly birds and maybe that is one system but I don't think it's an ideal system. So are there any systems out there that will satisfy the new ventilation requirements uh, that will allow homeowners to ventilate their roof cavity and also keep the cavity cooler? Well, maybe there is. So we'll have a look at a potential solution in part two of this series about the new ventilation requirements of the National Construction Code.